It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Hey, everybody, welcome to You Don't... Oh, it's just you. Just so you know, if I seem insensitive to your lonely needs, don't take it personally. I'm just a voice in your TV. You do know that, don't you? One. This category is lepers make damn good sausage. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Well, okay there, big guy. It's our Chicago episode, so not only are we going to talk about the teams and the buildings and the pizza, we're going to take a look at the darker side of that fair city, huh? You know, like the Upton Sinclair writing about folks losing their hands in the Chicago sausage factories, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's get started, huh? Say a Chicago sausage fact. Okay, that's enough of that. My jaw hurts now. <clears throat> Say a Chicago sausage factory holds a company-wide game of where is Thumbkin? Considering what's used for sausage casings, how will the thumbless factory workers reply? In a cow's stomach lining, in a sheep's intestine, in a pig's aorta, or in a horse's dermis. The traditional way of making sausage is to put spiced ground meat and occasionally a human thumb into a casing made from sheep's intestine. Mmm, these appetizers are great! What are they? Oh, those? Those are my finger sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Category is going to be Little Reds Riding in the Hood. Let's see what you'll do for a thousand bucks. Put your head between your knees because we're going down. Say instead of finding a wolf in her grandmother's bed, Little Red Riding Hood found the entire city of Chicago. Wow. What would Red most likely have said? Grandma, what a big head you have. Grandma, what big shoulders you have. Grandma, what big arms you have. Or Grandma, what big hair you have. going down on your permanent record. What do you say we check out the right answer? Chicago is known as the city of big shoulders. Turns out Granny was just wearing a new shirt with those sewn-in puffy shoulder pads. That's when Little Red Riding Hood really got scared. I'm calling this one thumbs up where you get this one you pocket two thousand bucks okay so it looks like roger ebert finally found a permanent partner to replace gene siskel yep apparently this uh richard roper character will now be ebert's other thumb sure took him long enough to find somebody though suppose that while looking for his new partner roger ebert had hired an animal with opposable thumbs to be his feuding pal what animal would have joined him in the balcony any primate any carnivore any mammal or any vertebrate Although a primate could never replace Gene Siskel's incisive critical sense, primates do have opposable thumbs. Well, in my opinion, the film was perfect. Superb acting, flawless script, and impeccable direction. What did you think? <laughs> well, yes, you have a point there. Four. This one's called, hold your pinky out when you spit. You get it right, you get 2K. Think fast, it's question time. Suppose the White Sox hire Miss Manners to be their new coach. Given when it's proper to wear white, what will she insist be the length of their season? Memorial Day to Labor Day, Arbor Day to Flag Day, May Day to Independence Day, or Easter to Columbus Day? According to fashion tradition, those white socks are only appropriate between Memorial Day and Labor Day, but they can keep the black uniforms if Miss Manners says it's okay. Today, the art of dining. Now, as second baseman, what is your relation to home plate? Uh, I'm a dessert fork. Outfielders? Finger bowl. Uh, steak knife. Yeah, steak knife. Well, this should be good. This one's a dis or dat. This dis or dat category is called World Records That Require Batteries. Okay, I'm going to read off seven statements, and I want you to tell me whether each one refers to the Sears Tower or the classic pocket rocket vibrator. As each one comes up, if it refers to the long, sleek Sears Tower, which is in Chicago, press the square button. If it refers to the long, sleek pocket rocket vibrator, which may also be found in Chicago somewhere, press the circle button. And if you don't know, press the triangle to skip it. You get $1,000 for each right answer, but 1000 is taken away for each incorrect answer or those you don't get to. Okay, you got 30 seconds. You ready? Here we go. 
used to be the largest in the world. Seriously. Major tourist attraction. Radio broadcasts from it. 2,000 miles of electrical wiring. Define the Chicago skyline. 26 inches in high winds. Last one has blinking light on top. Yeah, six out of seven. That's as close as you can get to being perfect without being me. Let's see what you did to your score. Talk about the price is right. Well done. Let's see what we got next. Six. Coming at you. New Jersey isn't just a way to New York. How does $2,000 sound? Okay, how about this one? Michael Jordan, number 23, right? Yeah, well, it wasn't always 23. No siree, Bob. That whole baseball retirement thing threw everything off kilter for a while. Considering the uniform number Michael Jordan briefly used when he first came out of retirement, which of these drinks might he have endorsed at that time? Five Alive, 50-50, seven up, or Colt 45. For a short time, Jordan's jersey was number 45. Yeah, I guess with a number like 45, he was afraid he wouldn't be able to break any records. Seven. Up next, burning Mrs. O'Leary's cow at the stake. 2,000 bucks for a correct answer. Okay, so everybody thought that Mrs. O'Leary's cow was responsible for the Great Chicago Fire, right? Well, a couple of years ago, they find out the cow is innocent. But hey, guilty or not, that cow was probably pretty well done by the time the fire was over. Given which fast food restaurant opened its first store in the Chicago area, and which of the following would you most likely have found the well-cooked meat of Mrs. O'Leary's cow? A McDonald's Big Mac, a Burger King Whopper, a White Castle Slider, or Wendy's Big Bacon Classic? That's gonna cost you. For the curious, here's the right answer. The first McDonald's restaurant opened just outside of Chicago in 1955. I sure as hell would like to know how they could have gotten that O'Leary cow, though. Oh, sure, Hamburglar had an alibi. He was watching a movie at Grimace's house. <laughs> yeah, my dimpled butt. Eight. Here's a little something I call, this is so embarrassing, I'll only say it on TV. One thousand bucks if you get it. Open wide. Imagine you want to spill your secrets on a Chicago talk show. Which of the following will you definitely not be doing? Sharing your all-Twinkies diet with Oprah. Attacking an ex-lover on Jerry Springer. Confessing your affair with your cat to Lisa. Or telling Jenny Jones that your butt talks. Lisa's the only one here that's not filmed in Chicago. And it's absolutely ridiculous to think that any self-respecting Chicagoan would have an affair with a cat. It's much more of a dog town. <coughs> Isn't that right, Scruffy? Yeah, Daddy's almost done. Okay. Nine. The category is Harvest Time at the Funny Farm. You get it right, I'm giving you $1,000. Eyes forward, we're going. John Belushi was on Saturday Night Live in its first season. Bill Murray joined in the third season. Chris Farley appeared in the 16th season. But where did they all appear first? First town, second city, third world, or fourth place? Belushi, Murray, Farley, they all started out with Chicago's famed second city improvisational theater. Then they moved to New York and were introduced to Victoria Jackson and that goat boy. Ten. This category is first down and seven deadly sins to go. I got $2,000 says you don't know this one. Okay, free your mind. Considering the official classification for a group of bears, of which deadly sin would the Chicago Bears most likely be accused? Sloth, gluttony, pride, or lust? group of bears is called a sloth. And considering the Chicago Bears' history, that's a compliment. Oh boy, get ready. I think I smell a coinky dink. 
Listen up, this is how we're gonna work this one. You're gonna see a bunch of different pairs that are in some way connected to one another. And you're going to see a series of items that may or may not connect that pair. Buzz in if you think an item correctly joins the pair. Every correct answer will get you a grand. But thanks before you choose, you're going down 1,000 for every wrong answer. At the end, I'm gonna give you a shot at some extra bonus cash. Pay attention to all the correct answers in the regular round if you want a shot at that bonus. Your Ink is called My Kind of Down. You got it? I hope so, because we're rolling. Blank Box Day and Musical Blanks and Dolls. What do these two items have in common? To chase a quarterback and track its blank hour. Convalescent and Blake, Texas Ranger. Slang for penis and LBJ's surname. Now for the bonus. What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all types of pizza? The Chicago 7, former mayors of Chicago, members of the 85 Bears, blues musicians, panels of Oprah, members of the Bears and 85, type of pizza, blues musicians. You nailed it. Hey, way to go. So you now, since you know the blues, you don't have to sing them. See how that works? Great job. You want to add that bonus, too? Looks like you're taking that, too, player one. Nice. Let's get out of here. Well. The category is going to be A River Runs Through All of Us. And this one's worth $3,000. Pencils ready. Let's do it. Which of the following best describes the unique engineering technique applied to the Chicago River at the beginning of the 20th century? Picking your nose, peeing your pants, vomiting, or constipation. How dare you? Well, that'll make an exciting story, won't it? Back in 1900, to improve the sewage system of the city, the natural flow of the Chicago River was reversed, just like the natural flow of food in your body is reversed when you vomit. The reversal of the Chicago River brought back a few thousand tons of sausages and about 742 missing mobsters. I'm calling this one. Oh, um, that's one of my girlfriend's tapes. And this one's worth $1,000. And now, your question. If you want to take a trip from Chicago to Boston, what songs might you play back to back? Right here waiting in Sister Christian, Glory of Love and Babe, Can't Fight This Feeling and Always or Stay the Night had more than a feeling. Stay the Night is by the group Chicago and More Than a Feeling is by that rockin' band Boston. Of course, that only leads to taking the journey. So get ready for that lovin', touchin' and squeezin'. This one's called Pizza and the Big O. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Forward March. If you like your lovin' just like you like your pizza, that is Chicago style, how do you like it? Deep and thick with lots and lots of sausage, thin and crispy or extra crusty. Chicago style pizza is thick, deep dish stuffed pizza. 
Now me, I like my loving with the cheese baked right into the crust. Yeah, baby, I don't know what that means. <laughs> You've almost made it to the credits, but first, the attack. When you see two words that match, hit your buzzer. If you're right, you get 2,000 bucks. If you're wrong, you're losing 2,000. Oh, and one more thing to remember. Remember the clue. The two words that match have to fit this clue. Here's your long-distance windy dedication. Hey, I kind of like this. Coming up next, sports and traffic. Yeah, I could see that. game that was a real thrill you were the best player we've had by far now do me a favor will you look to your left now look to your right now repeat after me Your inability to enter an aim will result in my doing so. I will now provide a fitting aim for you. I believe Slappy will work. Your if you would like to play Derek again, Darling was a please let me know. Adding flavor to a bland world. Derek was able to hear a song just once and then hum it all day. You wouldn't even realize he was doing it. It was like he brought this invisible happiness to our home. I don't like any kind of music. Classical, rock, jazz, you name it, I don't like it. But Derek, somehow he made it all sound pleasant. In a background music industry that demanded ubiquitous instrumental medleys, Derek Carling found success immediately. Derek was a genius. I mean, uh, no one can make shots shop or shop longer, our workers work harder. At his height, you couldn't go anywhere without subconsciously hearing Derek's stuff. Oh, he had groupies. Until... Until Derek's ego drove him into a nightmarish descent filled with booze and drugs. He went from audio architect to audio autocrat in about the blink of an eye. He crashed and burned good. Tonight, Derek Carling's 15 minutes of inharmonious infamy on Behind the Muzak. Hey, what are you doing? I'm lonely, are you? Call me, 1-800-HOT-BOX, let's go out. I was up for a night of hot woman on robot action. Well, I got what I wanted. Plus, at the end of the night, 
my robotic escort really put out. Give me a call, 1-800-HOT-BOX, I'm waiting by the phone, plus, at the end of the night, I really put out. Welcome to VH1's Behind the Song. This week, Leonard Skinner. Sure, the free bird we all know now is like 15 minutes long, but when we started out, that song was like, what, a minute and a half? Mm -hmm. But the fans, man, they just wanted more and more. So I told my boss, if you ask me to work on Saturday one more time... One more time? All right, one, two, three, four. I was playing this video game, and I reached the bonus level, so I one more time! All right, one more time. Tune in next week for another episode of VH1's Behind the Song. Welcome to VH1's Behind the Song. This week, Black Sabbath. All right, Iron Man intro auditions, take one. All right, just go ahead whenever you're ready. <clears throat> I am Iron Man. Again, please? I am Iron Man. Okay, thanks. Next. Hi, I'm Iron Man. All right, thanks. Next. I am Iron Man. Next. I am Iron Man. Thank you. I'm Iron Man. Yeah, that's it. Iron Man. We'll call you. I am Iron Man. Yeah, thank you. Hello, my name is Iron Man. Next. Hi, am I? Wait. Next. Hello. Ah! And so it went to the wee hours of the evening. Uh, that's it, man. We're out of people. I don't know. Maybe we should go instrumental on the beginning. I... Uh, excuse me. I'm from the cleaners. I've got your ironing, man. Wait a minute. Tune in next week for another episode of BH1 Behind the Song. Yes. <laughs>